Close your eyes and spread thoughts of goodwill. Goodwill for all beings of all kinds. As the Buddha said, that's our protection. On the one hand, it protects you from, from new karma. In other words, if you have goodwill for beings, you're not going to harm them. And then you're not going to have the karma of having harmed anybody. It also helps protect you from your past karma. As the Buddha said, if you can develop an unlimited mind, it's like having a huge fund of money. If there are any fines that you have to pay, you really don't feel them because your wealth is so much greater. Not having an unlimited mind, in other words, having goodwill only for a select few people, is like being poor. If you're slapped with a fine, you can't pay and they throw you in jail. In other words, the effects of past bad karma, if you have this unlimited mind of goodwill, hardly register with the mind at all. But you have to develop together with virtue and discernment, concentration. In other words, goodwill on its own is not going to take care of everything. You have to combine it with the rest of the path. In other words, with the precepts, you hold the precepts. You're not going to intentionally kill, steal, have illicit sex, lie, take intoxicants. In other words, it makes your goodwill real. When you say that you want other beings to be happy, you show it by the way you act. Same with concentration. You're looking for a sense of well-being inside. That doesn't have to take anything away from anyone else. If your pleasures in life have to depend on food, clothing, shelter of a special kind, if they have to depend on material gain, status, okay, then those pleasures are going to place a burden on other people. Whereas if you're looking for the pleasure simply by the way you breathe, who is burdened? Who is inconvenienced? And if you look for discernment as well, again, you begin to see areas in which you were harming other beings that you didn't notice, which have nothing to do with the precepts, but they're, they're subtle ways of harm, subtle types of harm, including harming yourself. Because that's the big issue in discernment, is learning how not to cause yourself suffering. Because if you're causing yourself suffering, then it's going to spill out on other people. You're not satisfied with your happiness, and so you would take it out on others. It's like our hummingbirds. When the feeders run out, they attack not, not the people who should be filling the feeders, but they attack one another. But if you learn that the true causes for suffering are inside, then you can take care of those, and then you're not leaning on other people, not taking anything out on other people because there's nothing to take out. And this way you show that your goodwill is real. So this path we follow is a path of goodwill. Years back there was a book on the Buddha's teachings. It was arranged around the Four Noble Truths. And then tacked on at the very end, it had a chapter on the four Brahmaviharas. And the author couldn't figure out some way to incorporate the Brahmaviharas into the Four Noble Truths, which is strange, because they come under right, under right resolve. The path is an expression of goodwill, and it further develops your goodwill. So as you sit here thinking thoughts of goodwill for all, remember, you want to make those thoughts real by the way you act, the way you think, the way you speak. That way your happiness is secure. Both from present actions and the possibility of present unskillful actions and secure from what past unskillful actions you had. Whatever bad karma comes your way, the mind doesn't have to suffer. When you develop those skills, then you're really safe.